All right, guys, in part two of our factoring quadratic polynomials, we're going to talk about how to factor quadratic trinomials where the a is not equal to 1. Our examples before had a equal to 1, so let's take a look at when it's not equal to 1. So first we want to find the factors of the product ac, whose sum is b. Before we were just looking at c because a was 1 and c times 1 is just c. Well, now we're dealing with times when a is not 1. So we've got to multiply a times c and find the factors whose sum is b. Still that middle b term. Other than that, our steps will be the same. Now, this is just one of many methods. We call this factoring by grouping. This is the one that we're going to use in class. If you want to look online, look up some YouTube videos, you'll come across other methods, although this is one of the most common methods. Uh, it's known as British factoring method. It's the one that we're going to use from here on out. All right, so first we need to find what we said was factors of A times C whose sum is b. That's what we're looking for. Uh, so first, though, we need to put this in the right order. If you look at what I just did, this wasn't even in the right order. So let's put this in the right order first. And now we've got our x squared term, our x term, and our constant term. And now we know that 12 is our a, negative 2 is our c, and our b is 5. So we've got our factors of 12 times negative 2, negative 24 over here. So I'm going to list that, negative 24 here. And we're going to find factors of negative 24 whose sum is positive 5. Now because this is a negative 24, I know that one of my numbers has to be negative and one of my numbers has to be positive. And because I'm going to end up with a positive 5 when I add them together, my bigger number should be positive and my smaller number should be negative. I've got listed here the factors of 24, 24 and 1, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Uh, and by looking at those, you should hopefully kind of focus here on 3 and 8. We know that positive 8 times negative 3 would give us a negative 24, and 8 minus 3 would get us that positive 5. So those are the two factors that we're going to use. We're then going to rewrite the b term uh, as a sum of our factors here. So we're going to rewrite our 5x as a positive 8x and a negative 3x using those two factors that we found right here. And then we are going to factor by grouping. Split it into two parts. We're going to pull out the greatest common factor from 12x squared plus 8x and the greatest common factor from negative 3x minus 2. When looking at 12x squared and 8x, my greatest common factor is 4x. When I pull out a 4x, I'm left with a 3x and a 2. If I were to FOIL that back out, you would get 12x squared and 8x. And when looking at negative 3x and negative 2, my greatest common factor is actually just a negative 1. So we're going to factor out that negative 1, which leaves us with 3x plus 2. Just like before, you should see that we have this common binomial as one of our factors. So we're going to rewrite that as 3x plus 2 in one set of parentheses, and then what we pulled out, our 4x minus 1 and the second set of parentheses. To check our work, we would factor that back out, boil that back out, which we can do in our heads, and make sure that we end up back at our original equation here of 12x squared plus 5x minus 2. All right, please remember this. It will make our lives easier in the future. We said before that we could take some shortcuts because there are patterns in math, and patterns enable us to take some shortcuts. And when we were multiplying polynomials, we looked at three different shortcuts. The product of conjugates, the square of a sum, and the square of a difference. Well, keeping those special products in mind, we can now work our way backwards for some special factoring examples. Remember that our difference of squares was a squared minus b squared, and our perfect square trinomials were a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. All right, this one came from our product of conjugates. That was when we had a plus b times a minus b. That gave us our difference of squares here. And these perfect square trinomials came from uh, a square of sums. So that was a plus b squared. And this one came from a square of differences, a minus b squared. 
So if we recognize that our beginning polynomial is in one of these three forms, we can now work our way backwards to our product of conjugates, square of a sum, or square of a difference that we saw in this first part of our lesson. In 5.1, I'm sorry. So let's take a look at factoring 8a squared minus 32. The first thing that we always want to do is look for that greatest common factor. And we do have a greatest common factor that we can pull out. The greatest common factor is 8. So let's factor out that 8, which leaves us with a squared minus 4. Again, when we factor out, we're doing the distributive property in reverse, so we're putting the parentheses back in. Distributive property removes the parentheses, we're putting them back in. We can look at a squared and go, hey, a squared is a perfect square. Hey, and 4 is a perfect square. So we've got two perfect squares. This is a special case. This looks like that, a squared minus b squared. a squared minus b squared, that was a product of conjugates. So we can work our way backwards and rewrite that as a product of squares, a squared, sorry, uh, rewrite our a squared as a squared and rewrite our 4 as 2 squared. So we now have our a squared and our b squared term. And remembering what remember we remember about conjugates, we can then write that as a plus b times a minus b, in this case a plus 2 and a minus 2. If we were to factor that or FOIL that back out to check our work, we should get a 8, 8 sorry, 8 times a squared minus 32. Had a hard time with that one. All right, let's factor x squared plus 10x plus 25. Hopefully, what we recognize right away is that this is a perfect square trinomial. Our perfect square trinomial was of the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And my first term is a perfect square, my last term is a perfect square, and my middle term is 2 times these two coefficients here. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to plug in my numbers. So I'm going to rewrite a squared as x squared. I'm going to write b squared as 5 squared. 25 is just 5 squared. And then my middle term is 10x, which is just 2 times a times b. 2 times a, which was x, and b, which was 5. Again, we're working our way backwards here. Now we see that that was because it's a sum. This fits perfectly with our square of a sum, which was a plus b squared. I'm just substituting x for my a and 5 for my b, a plus 5 squared. If I were to FOIL that back out, I would end back up here at this square of a sum special rule for binomials. So we're taking these special rules and we're now working our way backwards to the factors. A sum of squares cannot be factored using the real numbers. We will get to this a little bit later when we talk about some imaginary numbers, but for right now, the sum of squares cannot be factored using real numbers. So it might look like it's a special rule because we've got two squares here, but if it's got that plus sign in between those two perfect squares, we can't factor it using real numbers. Keep that in mind. All right, so when factoring quadratic polynomials, I'll give you a handout in class to help you remember the steps, but you can definitely write them down here as well. Always look for a greatest common factor amongst all of your terms and factor out the greatest common factor. Then look for any special factoring patterns. Are there any conjugates? What about square of a sum or square of a difference that we can use? If there are no special factoring patterns like binomials or trinomials, then move on to step three, which is factoring that trinomial. Using ax squared plus bx plus c, find factors of a times c, whose sum is b. Then split b into two, into two to factor. So we would rewrite b as those two different, uh, as a sum of terms there. Once we have that written, as a sum of terms, we can then factor by grouping. So first, let's look for a greatest common factor. Don't see any. Any patterns? Nope. Don't see any. So let's find the factors of a times c, 3 times negative 14, uh, which is negative 42. That one added equal a positive 19. I'm going to make my little x thingy here and write my negative 42 and a positive 19. 
because when I multiply, I want a negative 42. I know one has to be negative and one has to be positive. I've got my factors of 42 listed down here, and I know that 21 and 2, positive 21 and negative 2, when multiplied, give me negative 42. But when added, will give me a positive 19. So I'm going to rewrite that B term as a sum of the terms, a positive 21 and a negative 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and group the first two terms together and factor, pulling out a 3x, which leaves me x plus 7, and group my second two terms and factor. I have a negative 2 in common, which leaves me x plus 7. I should see this common binomial factor here, x plus 7 coming out of both. And so we're going to rewrite that as two different binomials, x plus 7, the one that they have in common, and 3x minus 2, the parts that are left over. If I were to FOIL that back out, I would get 3x squared plus 19x minus 14. All right, let's check out 2x squared plus 20x plus 50. First thing we want to do is factor the greatest common factor out. They do have a common factor. We can pull 2 out of all of this, which leaves me with x squared plus 10x plus 25. Any special patterns? Ah, indeed. This is a square term and this is a square term. So that looks like one of those trinomials that I can use. Now we could write that as a squared plus 2a b plus b squared and then go back to that rule of perfect square trinomials here or we can just factor that uh, using grouping we're doing the perfect square trinomial we're going to end up with 2 times a plus b squared if we just went from here to here, if we did it by factoring by grouping, we would take factors of 25 that when multiplied equal 25, but when added equal 10, well, that's 5 and 5, and we can write it this way. So either one of those ways we could have followed and we would have had that factored correctly, either by recognizing the special pattern or just factoring by grouping. Right. We reviewed a lot of information today. I'm hoping that some of this was just review. We will be doing some more factoring practice in class, looking for greatest common factors, trying to recognize those patterns, and using the British factoring method to factor our polynomials. But here's what we worked on today. We factored a common monomial from a polynomial, and we factored trinomials. We also used patterns to factor special products. If you guys have any questions, be sure to write them down and ask me next class.